Okay, do you remember what we learned last time? So we talked about the binomial distribution, right? So, <coughs> so the binomial distribution is needed into the, into, to count the number of the successful steps, right? So let's say you would like to do your experiment, you would like to do something, you would like to repeat something many times, n times, and you would like to know how many times you would get success, right? Uh, for example, you play the darts, if you get the first, the, the, the central circle, you win the game, okay? If you play the darts 10 times, what, then just count the number of the times you've got the circle, okay? So the number of the times you've got the circle is the random variable, right? If you play 10 times, you might get five times, you might get six times, you might get two times, right? And the, it has the binomial distribution, okay? So we're interested to find the probability of having uh, two successful trials or five successful trials or 10 and so on, okay? So this is the binomial distribution. So today we're going to talk about like a three more distributions. The first is called the Poisson distribution, okay? So it is read, so you need to write as Poisson, but you have to read this as Poisson, okay? So let's assume that in, in that side, opposite to our university, there is a hospital, right? So in the emergency room, let's assume the, registra the registration, the person counts the number of the patients who came there every Friday between 10 and 11 for the previous two months, okay? So last Friday, for example, there were four patients. Previous two weeks ago, there were five patients. Three weeks ago, there were one patient, okay? And so on. She counted all the patients every Friday between 10 and 11. Then she calculated that in average, every Friday between 10 and 11, there are 2.3 patients in average, okay? So just, just using this information, I would like to know what is the probability that next Friday between 10 and 11, there'll be four patients, okay? So for this kind of purposes, we need the Poisson distribution. You see that the Poisson distribution is again, just counting the number of the successful trials, but here we know the different information, right? While for the binomial distribution, we know the number of the trials and we know the probability of having success for single trial. For the Poisson distribution, we just know that average number of the events, successful events happen in some interval of the time or in the interval of the area or the volume, okay? <coughs> so there are some conditions for the Poisson distribution. So do you remember the three conditions of the binomial distribution, right? So the first is, um, the number of the trials is fixed, right? For example, you play the dart, you always play 10 times, okay? So this is fixed. No matter what happens, no matter whether you've got three successful trials or five or 10, you always play 10 times, okay? The probability of success for single trial is the same for all of the trials. And the third is there are always two outcomes, right? Either success, either failure, right? In this case, we can use the by all the features of the binomial distribution. And for the Poisson distribution, the conditions are like this. So usually the occurrences must be random. Okay? So I call I so in the previous, recall our previous example where we talk about the emergency room, right? So the number of the clients who come into the emergency room is random, right? But uh, so to, to give you some insight, to give you some feeling about this randomness, so let us say you would like to go to the dentist, right? So usually you have to make an appointment, and usually every dentist has a list of appointments, right? And they, she or he expects that the clients will come according to this list, right? Not randomly, according to the list, right? But while it is an emergency, if it has like a hurting your legs or head or uh, arms or whatever, you go to the emergency room, right? For example, okay? So the number of the clients, patients are coming to the emergency room is random. Okay? And also it is said that the occurrences must be uniformly distributed. What does it mean that the occurrences must be uniformly distributed? So in order to feel what does it mean, let's do some, of, some examples. So let's say X is the output of the rolling a die. And what kind of outputs it can have? One, two, three, four, five, and six, right? 
And usually it has the probabilities. 1 over 6, 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 and 1 over 6, right? So our probability, which is 1, or which is 100%, is distributed over the all outputs of the random variable uniformly, right? For example, if you have three kids and 6,000 terms, you give 2,000 per each. You distribute your money uniformly, okay? Or in, in our example, you need to understand it's like this. So if you have the time interval between 10 and 11, so the patients who are coming between 10 and 11 has the uniform distribution or uniformly distributed. It means that if you divide this to the six 10-minute pieces, the number of the patients who are coming to every of this piece, the small 10-minute piece, is more or less the same for everyone. Okay? So the number of the patients who are coming to the first 10 minute, second 10 minute, third 10 minute are more or less the same. Okay? So they are equally distributed. So this is what we call uniformly distributed. Okay? So if these conditions are fulfilled, then we can use the Poisson distribution. So usually we calculate the Poisson distribution with this formula. So you've seen this formula previously, right? So do you remember? Uh, that was an example where we needed to find the sum of this thing, right? For all possible x. And the sum was equal to what? E in the power of lambda. Do you remember this? No? Yeah? Do you remember? Did we do this? No. Okay, then just could you please write down the formula? <coughs> so, in a binomial distribution, we did the same thing, right? We find what is the probability of having x successful trials, right? In the Poisson distribution, we're doing the same thing. What is the probability of having x occurrences of some event, x successful event, okay? So we're using different formulas. And we're given different data as well, right? In the binomial distribution, you need to know two numbers, right? And the number of the trials, and p, the number of the successful events per trial. And for the Poisson distribution, we just need to know only one number, the average number of the events happening in this, in this interval. So, okay, let me give you an example to just feel that what I mean. So let's say you toss the coin 10 times, okay? Then probability of having the heads per trial is 1 over 6, right? Then you say, okay, so if, if you would like to calculate the probability of having six heads, then you need to use the binomial distribution, right? So if you would like to use the Poisson distribution in the same problem, what you need to do? So you need to know, okay, so if you toss the coin 10 times, what number of the heads you need to expect? What number of the heads you need to expect? How many times you will get the heads in average? Five, right? So this is the parameter of the Poisson distribution. Just using this parameter, you can calculate of having six heads, okay? You can calculate the same thing with the binomial distribution, the same thing with the Poisson distribution, okay? While the range of the applications of the Poisson distribution is much more than the binomial distribution, okay? So we will do a couple of more examples in order to feel what does it mean, okay? So let's say I wrote a text thing, and... After I printed the draft version, I found a lot of mistakes, okay? And what I did is I counted all the mistakes in this textbook and divided it to the number of the pages, okay? What, does the, what kind of number it gives me? Average number of the mistakes per page, right? Because I divide this to the number of the pages, right? The average number of the mistakes per page is 0 0.5, okay? It doesn't mean that if you open one of the pages, there will be 0 0.5 mistakes, right? Half a mistake, right? It, so it, if you open one of the pages randomly, there might be three mistakes, there might be five mistakes, there will be no mistakes, right? It just means that if you open one of the pages, in average, uh, no, in average, every page has 0 0.5 mistakes, okay? So now, if you open one of the pages randomly, how many mistakes there, there might be? We don't know, right? This is random number. Right? But we can evaluate this probability. 
what is the probability that if you open one of the pages, there will be at least one missing? No, but you, you need to calculate this. Let's calculate this. Is it clear the question? That if you open one of the pages randomly, what is the probability that there will be more than at least one mistake? Minimum one mistake, right? Not exactly one. Minimum one mistake. So let's do this example together, then the next one you will do by yourself, okay? Example. So we're given the lambda, right? So, oh, so it, it will be always like this. So if I say x has the Poisson distribution, then you need to know the parameter, okay? The parameter for the Poisson distribution is the mean, okay? So lambda is equal to the 1 over 2. What we need to find? So I need to find that the x, which is the x here, is the number of typos or mistake per page, right? Lambda is average number of typos per page. So we need to find that in randomly chosen page, the number of the mistakes should be more or equal to the one, right? At least one, right? So we need to find the probability that this x is more or equal to the one, okay? So what is this? So since x is the discrete variable, it, may, it takes the integers, right? So this is the probability of x is equal to the one plus probability of x is equal to the two plus and so on. Until which number I need to continue? For example, if I say you, toss the coin 10 times and tell me what is the probability of having at least one head. Right? You have to count until the 10, right? It was binomial distribution. For the Poisson distribution, there is no upper bound. Okay? Because this number of the mistakes might be might go until infinity theoretically. Obviously, practically, the maximum number would be the number of the words, total number of the words in the section, right? So theoretically, it goes to until infinity. Okay, there is no upper bound for the Poisson distribution. So in order to evaluate this probability, we need to write this as one minus probability of x is equal to the zero, right? Why? Because if I put this to the left hand side, this will be the sum of all the probabilities, right? So this will be p of x is equal to the zero, then one, then two, and so on until infinity. Their sum should be equal to the one, right? In order to be a proper mass function. But we know how to calculate that p of x is equal to the zero, right? x is equal to the zero. We know the probability of x using the Poisson distribution. It is e in the power of minus lambda, multiply to the lambda in the power of x divided to the x factorial, right? So we just need to plug everything into this formula. So what is the value of the lambda here? Minus 1 over 2, right? Multiply 1 over 2 in the power of x is equal to 0, right? x is equal to the 0. I'm calculating this, right? Divided to 0 factorials will be simply e to the power of minus 1 over 2, and the probability of having at least one error is 1 minus e power of minus 1 over 2. Okay? So which is equal to the almost 40%. Now let's, do our, uh, let's discuss the binomial distribution. Let's say you play a football, you kick the penalty, okay? And let's assume that for every penalty, probability that you will hit the goal is 90%, okay? And if you had 10 penalties, um, how many goals do you need to expect? Nine, right? 
the, this is the average, this is the expected value for the binomial distribution. We needed to multiply n to the p, right? What is the average value? What is the expected value for the Poisson distribution? If I say, hey, x has the Poisson distribution with parameter lambda, which is equal to the 1 over t. What is the expectation of the x? What is the expected value of the x? Huh? The voice this is equal to what is the expected value? So if I'm saying to you, hey, x has the Poisson distribution with the mean one over t, what does it mean? X has the Poisson distribution with the mean one over t. What does it mean? 1 over 2, right? Lambda is actually the mean, right? The expected value is equal to the lambda, right? So for the Poisson distribution, the expected value is equal to the lambda, but it appears the variance is also equal to the lambda. Okay? Could you please write this down? So now let's do a couple of more examples in order to get feeling about the Poisson distribution. Later on, we'll discuss the differences between the Poisson distribution and the binomial distribution. So the Poisson distribution has a wide range of the application. It can be um, <coughs> used in order to count the number of the defective items or to, to count the number of the radioactive uh, particles in emission or the number of the telephone calls received by some operator in some day. Okay? So it has a lot of like application. And it is really important because it is very similar to the binomial, which is also important, right? Why the binomial is important? Because we can use this in many situations, okay? So the reason why we are learning all of this distribution is that in practice, when you go, when you work, when you do some analysis over the data, you know, okay, so you know, okay, so how your data is behaved. Then you say, okay, so this, this behaves like a Poisson, right? Or this behaves like a binomial. Then you can use all the features of the binomial distribution in order to make the analysis over the data, okay? That's the reason why we're learning all of this distribution, okay? Now, let's say you wrote a code, software project, and you printed this and give it to me, okay? Obviously, most of the time when you write a program, there are a lot of errors, right? Let's assume that in the first page, there are 10 mistakes, then zero mistakes, then three mistakes, and so on. I counted, you counted all the mistakes, then just divide it to the number of the pages. Then you've got three. What is the meaning of the three? It means that in average, every page has three mistakes, right? It doesn't mean that if you open any page, there are three mistakes, right? It means that in average, every page has three mistakes, okay? Now, just knowing this, could you please tell me what is the probability that if I choose one of the pages randomly, there will be no mistake? Could you please do this by yourself? And the second pro and the second problem, what is the probability that there are more than three mistakes? In the first problem, could you please find the probability in the first problem, could you please find the probability that in a randomly chosen page there are no mistakes? In the power of minus three, right? Okay. And for the next problem, there are three or more errors. That means that x is more or equal to the three, right? Or it is one minus p of x is less than three, right? So we need to use the complement. Okay. 
So this is the typical histogram of the Poisson distribution. This is how it looks like, okay? So it's like, So now let's discuss what is the difference between the binomial distribution and the Poisson distribution. Usually, if I ask you, hey, calculate something using the binomial distribution, x has the binomial distribution, I need to give you two parameters, okay, n and p. While for the Poisson distribution, I need to give you only one parameter, right? Just the lambda, okay? So usually, okay, so in the, in the quizzes next week, you need to expect that I will give you, okay, so this is binomial, this is Poisson, then calculate this like this. But in exam, you should never expect this kind of thing, okay? I mean, for the, like, your big problems, like, your, for the difficult problems, um, you need to figure out what kind of distribution is this, okay? And you need to solve the problems, but I mean, find them, okay? So usually, it's like, I will, so you see, so there are a lot of formulas, okay? So later on, there'll be even more formulas, I don't want that you will learn all of them. This is not my point. I will distribute you. I will provide you all the formulas and exam sets. You don't need to learn them or bring the cheat list. Okay? So the, what I want from you is that you should know how to use them. Okay? Because nowadays, like, uh, learning the formulas most of the time is useless, right? Because you can just take your smartphone and find it on the internet. So that is why, like, it, my point is not, like, you know the formula, okay? My point is you know how to use the formula, okay? So the difference is of the binomial and the Poisson. So the first di difference, which is, like, a visual difference, is for the binomial, I need two parameters, and for the Poisson, one parameter, okay? But it appears there is connection between these two parameters and one, right? So if you multiply these two, it should give you this number, Right? Not this lambda, it gives you the mean, right? But not always you will get the same answer. So it appears if n is big and if p is small, then in this kind of cases, n multiplied to p is really close or is the same as the lambda, is, is the same as the lambda, the same lambda which we're going to use for the Poisson distribution. Okay? It means that if, and in, one of, in some of the examples, if n is big and p is small, then it is better to use the Poisson distribution. It is possible to use the Poisson distribution instead of binomial. Okay? So let's do this example. Let's say you have a company which produces items, some items, some pants, for example. Okay? If you choose some pants, sometimes it happens that it doesn't have the ball on the pants. Okay? So this is considered as defective. So if you choose one of the pins randomly, probability that this pin will be defective is 10%. Okay? Now, what you do is, so Timur has provided me 10 pins. Okay? I would like to know, what is the probability that out of this 10 pins, there is at most one defective? At maximum, one defective. So what kind of distribution I need to use? Binomial distribution, right? Because it perfectly fits to all the definition of the binomial distribution, right? So, what is the number of the trials? So, how many pens I need to check? Ten, right? The number of the trials is ten. What is the probability of success having defective pen? Is one over ten, right? So, what we need to find? We need to find that the number of defective pins should be at most one, right? And I need to find its probability. So this is P of X is equal to the zero plus P of X is equal to the one, right? So what is this according to the Poisson formula? Do you remember? Uh, so, sorry, according to the binomial formula. Do you remember the formula for the binomial distribution? This is the probability of having X successfully dead, right? out of n trials. So this is combination of n and x multiplied to the p in the power of x multiplied to the q in the power of n minus x. Right? Okay, so here it will be c, 10, 0, p in the power of 0, q in the power of 10, plus c, 10, 1, 
T1, T0, right? So if you calculate this using the calculators, this will be roughly 0 0.724, okay? Now, let's say I would like to do this, do solve this problem, evaluate the probability of having at most one defective item using the Poisson distribution. What I need to know in order to apply the Poisson distribution? I need to know the average number of defective pins within this pin, right? So if you have 10 pins, how many defective pins do you expect to have? One, right? This is, I will take as a lambda. Okay, so I will take lambda as n multiplied to the p, which is 10 multiplied to the 1 over 10, which will be equal to the 1. Okay, now I will evaluate the probability of x is less or equal to the 1 using the different formula. I will evaluate the same thing using the different formula. So this will be p of x is equal to the 0 plus p of x is equal to the 1. So this is, do you remember the formula of the Poisson? So it was e in the power of minus lambda, lambda in the power of x divided to the x factorial, right? So this should be e in the power of minus 1 multiplied to the 1 in the power of 0 divided to the 0 factorial, plus e in the power of minus 1 multiplied to the 1 in the power of 1 divided to the 1 factorial. So this is t over e. Could you please tell me what is this in the calculators? So could you please divide t to the e? So this is 0 0.738 or something like this, right? Very close to our previous example, right? So it appears that like using the Poisson distribution and using the binomial distribution, we can evaluate the same thing, right? But for this problem, it would be more fitable, it would be more better, better to use the binomial distribution, right? Not the Poisson distribution. Um, and do you know why? Why it is better to use the theory of the binomial distribution? Why not the Poisson distribution? So here, in the Poisson distribution, you need to know the average number, right? And uh, for, for your predictions, it is better to use the average which is taken in bigger interval of the time, right? Not in just in the pen, right? For example, it is possible that in this pen, in a batch of 10 pens, there might be no pen, no, no, no defective pen, right? So it is better to take more pens, right, in order to calculate the average number, okay? Or it's like, in order, it is better to measure the average in a bigger interval of the time in order to use the Poisson distribution. So for example, for this case, so let's say you produce some electric, electric component. If you choose one of, so out of 50, usually there is one is defective, okay? What does it mean? It means that if you choose one of the electric components randomly, probability that this will be defective is one over 50, okay? Now, you've got a batch of 300 electric components and you would like to know, out, so you put 300 components to the pack and provide it to me, okay? Uh, before opening this, I would like to know, hey, what is the probability that, uh, oh, oh, it's like this. So it's like a real market, right? So you sell this one pack to the market, right? Your producer, so usually producers do not sell the items to the customers directly, right? They usually sell this to the distributors to some markets or supermarkets, then they sell it, right? So obviously, if the supermarket buys the item, right, the package, the, then the uh, um, supermarket should add to the margin the prices of the defective items as well, right? Because if some, some items are defective, then supermarkets should, should compensate them, right? Now the supermarket would like to know, what is the probability that the package will have at least eight defective components. Okay, I mean, it is super important, especially for the supermarkets, in order to calculate the margin, right? So this should be included, for sure. So what I need to do, so this is the binomial distribution, right? Because, and 
which is the number of the trials, is fixed. What is the end? Is 300. Probability of having one uh, defective item is also fixed, which is 1 over 50, right? 1 over 50. And what we need to do is we need to calculate the X, which is the number of the defective items, more or equal to the 8, at least 8. It means more or equal to the 8. So this is 1 minus P of X is less than 8, which is 1 minus P of X is equal to the 0, plus P of X is equal to the 1, plus and so on, plus P of X is equal to the 7, right? Now, we can calculate the probability of x is equal to the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, until the a, until the 7, either using the binomial distribution, either using the Poisson distribution, okay? So, for, the for both of the problems, we need to have the same result, okay? So, in the exam, you need to, or in the practice, you need to look for the example. So, if the example looks like a binomial distribution, binomial experiment, but the end, the number of the trials is big, and the P, which is the probability of success, is small, then just use the Poisson distribution, okay? For example, in this case, I just need to know this lambda, right? So what does it mean, this lambda? It means the, uh, if you have 300 items, right? It's like this. If the probability that one item is defective is 1 over 50, right? What number of defective items you should expect in a batch of 300 items? Okay, if the probability of choosing item is defective, is 1 over 50, okay, probability that you will choose the item and this will be defective is 1 over 50, okay? Out of 50 items, how many defective items you need to expect? You expect one, right? Out of 100, how many defective items you expect? Two. Out of 300, six, right? This is the lambda, okay? You understand it? Then you use this lambda in order to evaluate this probability using the Poisson distribution, right? Okay? Good. So now let's talk about the another distribution, which is called the geometric distribution. So we call the random variable X is the Bernoulli trial. Do you, do you understand this word, trial? Right? So you try something, right? It's called the Bernoulli trial if it gets only two options. Either one, either zero, okay? With the probability P. Uh, actually, we needed to learn this before we started the binomial distribution, but it's like better later, uh, it's better to do this later than never, right? So, like, binomial distribution is the sequence of the Bernoulli trial, right? Do you remember we talked about this, right? So, we say that we would like to write down the result of single trial as zero, or one, right? Do you remember? From this, we've got the formula, right? Okay. So, Bernoulli trial is just like the zero or one, okay? Now, geometric distribution is very similar. Oh, is, is, is again, the sequence of Bernoulli trial. It's just some sequence of the zeros and ones, but here we would like to count differently, okay? So, previously, what we did? So if you do your experiment n times, for example, if you toss the coin 10 times, or if you hit the penalty 10 times, or if you play the darts 10 times, you counted the number of the successful trials, right? You counted the heads, the number of the heads, you counted the goals, or you counted the number of the pens, and you got the circle, right? Now, let's change the problem. Let's say you play the game, okay, the darts, or the penalty, Okay, so uh, you finish the penalty. Uh, have you ever played the cards like a Ludaka? Right? Yes. So, so when when we played, it was like this. So it's like. I don't remember exactly, but it was like you start when you win or something like this, right? Oh, it was this one. Okay, 
So let's say you play the game to you hit the penalty, okay? And you will hit you will continue hitting the penalty um, until you will get the goal. Okay? Or you toss the coin and you keep tossing the coin until you will get the hat. Okay? Or you take the courses until you will get the A plus. Okay? Uh, if you don't get the A plus, you never stop the university. Okay? So until you will get the A plus, or for example, you take this course until you will not fail this course. Right? Yes? Okay? Um, you understand what is, what is this? So now what we're interested is, we're interested in the number of the attempts we, we're doing, right? So how many attempts we need to do in order to get the first success, right? So how many penalties I need to shoot in order to get the first goal? So how many times I need to toss the coin in order to get the first hat? So how many times you need to take the probability and statistics in order to do not fail this course, right? For example, right? Okay. So this is called the geometric distribution. So this variable. So previously we counted the number of the successful trials when we fix when we do the experiment fixed number of the times. Now we count the number of the trials where the number of the successful is fixed, which is one, right? You finish until you will get the first success. You, uh, sorry, you continue until you will get the first success. Okay? Now let's calculate the probability. For example, geometric distribution. Okay? Um, I would like to know, what is the probability of having or of having first had on course trial? Okay, so if you play the game, okay, and, and you play this game until you will get the first hat. So what is the probability that you will finish this game on the fourth trial, after fourth trial? What is this probability? So if you write down the results in terms of the zeros and ones, it should be like a zero, 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 one, right? Are there any other possibilities to finish the game on the fourth trial? No way, right? So this is equal to the Q in the power of three multiplied to the T. Right? Okay, so the formula for the geometric distribution is probability that we will finish exactly on the case trial is Q in the power of K minus 1 multiplied to the P. Okay? Do you understand the formula? Very simple, right? Okay. So this is how we need to calculate the expected value. Could you please write it down? So the expected value is one over t. In our example with the tossing the coin, what does it mean? What is, it, what is its interpretation? What is the expected value for this? It's one over p. What is the p? It's one over two, right? It will be two. What does it mean? It means that if you toss the coin, you need to expect that you will get your first hat on the second trial, right? This is what does it mean. So the variance is 1 minus p over p squared. And there is one more formula which you need to prove at home is cumulative geometric distribution. Okay? So it means that what is the probability that you will get first success until k is trial? Okay? It is like what is the probability that you will get first hat until fifth trial? Not exactly on the fifth, but until fifth trial. Okay? So this is equal to the 1 minus q and the power of 3. So you need to prove this. You need to take it serious because one of them 
one of the three of this at home will be an exam, to be sure. If you have any questions, you need to come to me during the office hours, and we'll discuss it. Okay? Okay, so now, this is the generalized version of the geometric, uh, geometric distribution. It is called negative binomial. So now let's assume that um, you would like to count more than one success. Okay, so it's like we finish the game not when you get the first half. We finish the game, for example, when you get the second half or the third half. Okay, so I would like to count the number of the attempts until you will get the third half. Okay, or um, I would like to continue hitting the penalties until you will get the third goal. Okay, or you will continue tossing the ball to the basket until you will get third score. Okay? So let us calculate the probability. Do you, do you understand this? So the geometric distribution is just a particular case of this distribution, right? Where the number of the successes is just one. Here the number of the successes is more than one. Okay. So negative binomial distribution. Negative binomial distribution. So let's say like this. So I would like to calculate the probability of having third pad on seventh trial. What is the probability that I will get the third hat exactly on the seventh trial? So what I will do is I will make the box seven boxes, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Seven boxes. So what I need to do is I need to write down the results after each trial, right? I will put either zero, either one, okay? Now, if I would like to finish this game exactly on the seventh trial, what should be the last digit? Success, right? The last digit should be one, right? Why not zero? If this is zero, it means that either I got three hats already previously, right? And I had to finish previously. Either I didn't get the three hats yet. I need to go, right? So the last one should be one, right? For sure. Always, right? Okay. If the last one is one, how many ones left in order to be clean? Two, right? So, for example, let's put them here. And how many zeros? Four. One, two, three, four. Okay? For example, I can win this game on the seventh trial by doing this sequence. Okay? For example, first time hats, then hats, then four times in a row tails, then half. Then I won the game. Right? Is it possible to generate different sequence, another sequence? Yes? So if I change the permutation, uh, change the places of this digit, right? I can choose four zeros first, then two ones, right? Or any other permutations of this number, right? You understand this? For all of these cases, I will win the game. I cannot touch the last one, right? Because the last one should be always one, right? Now, could you please tell me what is the probability of having exactly this sequence? So this is the number of the ones, right? Multiplied, so P multiplied the number of the ones, right? So this is P in the power of three, multiplied is the Q in the power of four, right? Probability of this sequence. You understand this, Akbar? Yes, okay. Now I need to count how many times I can, how many different sequences I can generate to win this game, right? So this is, I need to find the permutation of this six numbers, right? So do you remember what is the number of the permutation of six items? It's just six factorial, right? But if some items are alike, then I need to divide them, right? It is two factorial multiplied to the four factorial, right? So this is the combination of six and two. This is what I have to multiply here, six and two, right? Do you understand this? Because each sequence of, 
each of the sequence will always have this kind of probability, right? I need to count the number of the sequences and sum all of them, right? But since all of them have the same probability, it's better to just multiply them to this number of the sequences, right? Okay, now let us try to figure out the general formula, okay? Let's say R is the number of successful trials and K is the number of the trials. So what is the general formula? What is the probability of having our success exactly on the case trial? So how many successes you need to have? R, right? Always. P in the power of R. How many failures you need to have? K minus R. Q in the power of K minus R. This is fixed, right? Now I need to count the how many times I can permute K minus one item, right? Because I cannot permute K items. The last one is fixed, right? So this is the combination of the K minus one and R minus one, right? Because always, so in the sequence, if the case one is the success, then in the previous K minus one, how many successes I need to, I have? R minus one. Right? So this will be the combination of R minus 1 successes out of the K minus 1 position. Okay? So this is called the negative geometric uh, binomial distribution. So let's do a couple of examples. Okay? So let's say you have an old card, for example, Zhiguli, old Zhiguli, okay? And Usually, it doesn't start immediately. Oh, sometimes, it doesn't start immediately, okay? So you need to rotate the key. Sometimes it starts, the, the engine launches. Sometimes it doesn't, okay? So let's assume the probability that it launches from the first, from any attempt is 3 over 4, 75%. But the problem is like this. If your attempt is uh, unsuccessful, then you have to wait for five minutes. Within this five minutes, it doesn't launch anyway. Okay? Is that clear the problem? Now, could you please tell me what is the probability that you will start the engine exactly on the third attempt? What is the probability that you will start the engine on the third attempt? So the number of the attempts which you need to do in order to start the engine, what kind of distribution it has? Geometric, right? Because the last one is successful, right? So all the previous ones are su unsuccessful. You will just keep doing this until you will get the success, until you will launch the engine. So this should be geometric distribution. So that is why... The probability of having la the, to launch the engine exactly on the third trial is, what is this? So what kind of sequence it should ha have? Zero, zero, one, right? So failure multiplied to the failure multiplied to the success, right? So this will be three over 64, okay? Good? Now, let's say you are in one of the dangerous places with this car. Okay, and you need to leave this place right immediately, okay, or at within 10 minutes, okay. Otherwise, like, something bad might happen, okay. So now, could you please tell me what is the probability that you will survive? Could you please calculate this or tell me the idea what I need to do? Is it clear the question? Within 10 minutes. You start the first time, then wait five minutes, start the second time, five minutes, third time also. Within 10, including 10, okay? No, no, it does not say. What is the probability that you will survive? Is it clear the question, right? 
Is it clear what you need to do? Maybe not, right? That, but you understood the question as well. Huh? Okay. It's like, let's simulate this, right? Let's model it. If you start at the first time, do you survive? Yes, right? So what is the probability of launching this at the first time? Three or four. If you start the second time, do you survive? Because five minutes left, right? Five minutes only, only passed. Yes, you'll survive. What is the probability of launching this second time? One over four multiplied to the three over four, right? If you launch this third time, do you survive? Yes, right, because this is still within 10 minutes, right? First time, Im right immediately. Second time after five minutes, exactly on the five minute, fifth minute, right? Then third time, exactly on the 10th minute. Right? So what is this? 3 over 64. So you will survive either in this case, or in this case, or in this case. Right? So what you need to do is, you need to evaluate probability of x is less or equal to the 3. Okay? Okay, let's consider this example. So let's assume the new company is open, APOM. Okay? You would like to go there to work. And you need to go through the application, the interview, okay? And the probability that each of you will pass the interview is 60%, okay? So they need, to, they need only three workers, okay? So once they got the three workers, they stopped. So why they need to continue, right? They can't do this. So could you please tell me what is the probability that the company have to make six interviews in order to find three Three workers is fixed, right? A number of the interviews might be different. By the way, do you feel the difference between the binomial and negative binomial? Right? In binomial, we fix the number of the trials, right? If it would be in the binomial, I would say, okay, so I would like to get as much as possible workers, right? If I do 10 interviews, how many workers how many workers I can get, right? Either zero, either one, until 10, right? This is binomial. Now this is different. Now I'm saying you, I need only three workers, only three, okay? And this is fixed. The number of the successful trials is fixed. And now I would like to count how many times I need to make the interview in order to get the three, okay? Do you feel the difference between binomial and negative? Okay, so this is negative binomial distribution, right? We need to evaluate this uh, using this formula, right? So C, K minus 1, which is 5, R minus 1, which is 2, multiplied to the Q in the power of 3, P in the power of 3, okay? Now, let's change the problem. Let's say like this. So usually, um, especially in Europe, if you apply for a job from a choose a company from a different city, and if they call you for the interview, they uh, cover all the expenses, your traveling expenses, your accommodation, your meals, everything, okay? So let's say the company has a budget to make at most, at, most, at maximum, six interviews, okay? So the company has the budget to have at maximum six interviews. What is the probability that the company's budget is enough to find three workers. Do you understand the question? No? One more time. So the company has to cover all the expenses for each of the applicants, okay? And it has a budget to cover maximum six applicants, okay? Now, what is the probability that company's budget is enough to find three workers? Yes. Okay, so let's do this. So if the company makes three and could you, like, if the company makes three uh, interviews, 
Is it enough? The budget is enough? Yes. So x is equal to the 3. What is this according to the formula? Do you remember the formula of the negative binomial distribution? It is x is equal to the k. This will be c, k minus 1, r minus 1. Do you see r is given always, right? The r is fixed. t in the power of r, q in the power of k minus r, right? Probability of having three uh, uh, interviews in order to find the three workers is c, k minus 1. What is the k? It's 3, right? It's 2. How many uh, successful in interviews? How many workers? 2, right? Multiply P, which is 0 0.6, in the power of 3. Q, which is 0 0.4, is 0. Okay? So if I do four interviews, does the company's budget is enough? Yes. Okay? So let's calculate this. This will be C. What, what I need to write in the below? 3 and above? 2, right? R minus 1. Right? R is 3, always. So 0 0.6 in the power of 3, right? So still 3 workers. Multiply to 0 0.4, multiply to the 1. Right? Okay. So if I do 5 interviews, does the company's budget is enough? Yes, right? So this is C. 5 minus 1 is 4. 3 minus 1 is 2. 0 0.6 in the power of 3. 0 0.4 in the power of 2. Okay, three successful interviews, T unsuccessful. Three successful, T unsuccessful in the five, right? So if I do five, the company's budget is uh, six, sorry. The company's budget is still enough, right? So this will be C, what I need to write in below? Five above, two, 0 0.6 in the power of what? Three, 0 0.4 in the power of three, right? The company's is budget is enough either in this case, or in this case, or in this case, or in this case, right? I need to sum them. So the company's budget is enough when the probability means, mathematically, you can write this as probability of x is less or equal to the 6. Okay? So why this x cannot be less than 3, by the way? Why this x cannot be less than 3? Because you cannot find 3 workers by doing t applications, t interviews, right? Okay? So this is about the uh, discrete distribution. So from next week, we're going to start the continuous distribution. So